Good afternoon, Money.net Live. I've got Ryan Sellers of Mr. Open Outcryer. How are you, man? I'm doing well. How you doing? <laughs> you know, uh, you had no small feat this week with all of the news coming out. You, how do you keep up with it, man? A lot going on. Um, you know, honestly, with this uh, this environment, there's all the macro headlines going on. It kind of it kind of changes the way you trade individual stocks. It changes yeah. my approach to trading a little bit. You got to shift what you're looking at. So uh, just constantly adjusting on the fly to to the macro environment versus the uh, stock specific stuff. And I was on Twitter Spaces today with Wolf Financial earlier today, and uh, you know the, I kept hearing uh, options, options, options. But it seems to me that the options volume is is drying up a bit. Am I right or wrong here? Ryan? No, you're, you're right. It's definitely drying up. Um, I think it's twofold. I think you have retail backing off quite a bit from getting smoked in the spring and, and summer. And then there's a little bit of just kind of summer trading happening at the same time yeah. where overall market volumes are backing off. And it seems that I would say 90% of their retail trade was just naked puts and calls, whereas they weren't putting any spreads on. Am I right? Yeah, hundred percent. They were they were going straight into mostly front month, uh, a lot of the, the early stuff, uh, just outright buying calls or outright buying puts, and then learning some hard lessons along the way about how options work, kind of on the fly. I I know those hard lessons personally. I've been there. All right, let's get right to it. Lots of news coming out. Powell seventy five. Uh, basis points uh, yesterday. The one thing I said that I wanted to see personally was a roadmap. Do you think the roadmap is now laid down for us for 50, 25, and 25, or do we have a roadmap at all? Um, I think that he backed off the roadmap a little bit with saying data dependent. So we're kind of uh, going to go with the numbers now as we see them come out. We'll live and die with each of these new releases, I think, um, what everybody thinks they're going to do. You know, and, and I think I heard it earlier today, the government is the only place where the goalposts get moved so easily and they just change the wording. Ryan, you and I have been in the game a long time. Um, the word recession to me means two consecutive uh, months or quarters with uh, negative GDP. Is it still that way to you? That is the definition as I understood it as well. If you want to talk about moving the goalposts, man, there was, there was a whole lot of... Uh, a whole lot of semantics and backpedaling from the White House and the administration on things today. Even Powell, you know, kind of saying this doesn't look like or this doesn't feel like a recession to me. Um, yeah, it, I thought it was really interesting. The wording he used, there was a lot of thinks and feels versus saying what it is and isn't. So I, I went to the grocery store to Publix and I saw two bags of Frito Lays for nine bucks, you know, a carton of eggs for twelve dollars. I'm like, you know, I, I get it as Florida. I get that. But. It does feel like to some people that the recession is here. It feels like inflation is out of still out of control. Is inflation still out of control in Chicago? Um, well, I moved to Texas, but oh, you did. <laughs> but yeah, um, there's we see the same thing on the shelves. I think there is a there's a divergence in two things. I mean, you see the the this, is the stock market the real economy? There's there's some yes and no to that, and. I would say that the things that people see in their everyday things isn't really always reflected in what the stock market's doing. And I think that also goes to a sort of income inequality. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that are getting hurt are the people that, you know, have the, the least room for error. And so inflation on everyday items is going to hurt them. Whereas someone who's more successful, you know, 50 cents on a carton of eggs doesn't really matter. But if it's a 50% increase, you know, right. that's a big difference. So you're talking about, you know, real numbers versus percentage numbers, and it adds up. Especially if you have a big family as well. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about something else here. Um, I was asking a broker earlier today, what sector does he still like? He still loves the tech sector and the bio sector. Uh, is it still hot or are we, we starting to cool off a little bit in the biotech and tech? Um, I, I don't have an opinion on biotech, to be honest. I think, I think there's uh, that, that's not, maybe just because it's cooled off, there's a chance for a resurgence. Over, as we're talking about on the year personally, but, um, you know, I think energy started to back off a little bit. So there's the sector that was the hot sector for the first half that, you know, a few months of the year with oil going nuts was a, the sector that died. I don't know about as far as tech goes, you have all these big earnings and there was so much fear in the market. I think, uh, that there was a sigh of relief this week between, you know, Microsoft and Google's earnings. They weren't great, but they weren't as bad as they were feared. So, you saw the stocks both react positively to what it looked like, you know, bad headline numbers. So I think maybe the idea that some of this stuff is starting to be baked in because everyone got so worried about it, you're starting to see that, you know, the opposite reaction to earnings versus 
a more typical reaction to the headline numbers. I totally agree with that. And, you know, one of the things that um, I've been saying is in, in earnings, I don't think that investors, the bigger investors, don't really care about the earnings right now, win, win or lose, a beat or a miss. I think they're more concerned about the guidance uh, and, and the length of that guidance. You know, six months out, you know, Facebook saying we're, we're making a change, Meta saying, you know, Zuckerberg saying, okay, hey, uh, Meta's, Metaverse is going to take a little longer than we expected, but we're okay. We're, we're, we're on top of this. Um, what what words or what feeling do you want to hear out of guidance that makes you feel good about a company? Okay, this isn't so bad. I'm okay with this. I'll, I can invest in it. Um, I mean, you talked about moving the goalposts earlier, and I think you're starting to see that in some of the conversations on these earnings yeah. calls. You know, it used to be growth and user numbers and subscribers and all these other things. And now that that's not a number that people want to put on the front of the headline anymore, you're starting right. to, you're, you know, they're starting to change it. And so they're talking about, you know, future earnings or the next project and they're trying to change. Uh, it's like, look over here, not over there kind of things. Yeah, I think um, a good example of that would be Netflix saying, hey, we're going to lose two million subscribers. Uh, obviously, Netflix falls. Netflix comes out and says, OK, we lost a million users, uh, subscribers, uh, but we're going to crack down on people, you know, sharing passwords. Mm -hmm. So is that what you're talking about and a lot of the headline kind of feel? Yeah, absolutely. I think they're they're trying to change the conversation. You know, don't don't look at it. You're, you're also seeing some people start to sandbag their numbers a little bit. They're try, you know, you make it look as bad as possible. It's the the kitchen sink stuff where you say, "All right, it's going to be awful. We're going to lose all these people," and then you lose half as many. So you, the conversation is, we didn't lose as many subscribers as we thought. Whereas you know, two quarters ago in last year, it was, "Oh my God, you're losing subscribers. What's going on?" So it's right. it's all about changing the conversation. Talking about changing the conversation, uh, Teflon magician, whatever you want to call him, Elon Musk uh, seems to always, it always brings a tickle to my face when I say his name. Uh, he seems to change the subject every other day. Twitter, uh, SEC, you name it. He's always got his, you know, having 25 kids with 10 different wives, <laughs> uh, you know, half naked off the of back of a boat and, <laughs> and wider than a sheet. Uh, look, this is supposed to be the richest guy in the world. And, uh, you know, is he acting like a CEO here? Has he ever acted like a CEO? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, he's always kind of, he's always done his own thing, his own way, uh, for better or worse. You know, um, he's one of those guys where it feels like most people's opinions about him are formed. And no matter what he does, you're not going to change it any That's either way at this point. You know, if you if you love him, you love him more. If you hate him, you hate him more for everything he does. I, mean, so. I just feel like he doesn't do anything to help himself. You know, it's no, like, no. come on, Elon, do something. <laughs> All right. So obviously uh, the doldrums are coming up, the the, the slow time of the markets. Uh, we know that options are drying up as well. How would you and how are you positioning your portfolio now? Are you buying longer term stuff? Or are you backing into cash? What are you doing here personally? Um, so to, to be totally transparent, I'm, I'm an active day trader. So when I talk yeah. about this stuff, I speak about it from a day trading perspective. Yeah. Um, my, when we talk about investments, that's just, I put a, a, a certain amount of money away each month and I forget about it. Um, from a day trading perspective, yeah, we are seeing volumes drying up. We're seeing things move towards a more of a macro themed, you know, the, the headlines this week have been all about what's Jay Powell doing. We've had Yellen speaking today. We've had Biden speaking today. And there hasn't been a lot of stock specific uh, action or news that has worked really well, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so with that in mind, I'm, I'm backing off my trading. I'm slowing down. I'm doing less. Um, kind of waiting to see the signs of things picking up. I'm looking for signs of volume. I'd like to see some trades work a little better before I go back in full force. Okay. Um, so and I think we got maybe, you know, this is how it used to be in the summer. You know, I've been trading for 20 years and it used to die down. The last two or three years was everyone was at home doing nothing. So we never really had those die down summer months. And this is a little bit more typical. So you need to not get hurt. You need to preserve your capital and then be ready for usually September. So Ron, are you and saying October. that the world's getting kind of back to normal when trading? The uh, It feels that way. It definitely feels like the world's getting back to normal. That's you know? good for us. It's been doing this for a long time. At least we it know is. how things work. <laughs> it is. I thought the world... I know a whole lot of people, you and myself included, who uh, were real excited to get on a plane and go do some traveling again this summer for the first time in a while. So where did you go? Taking a break. Um, we went to Gulf Shores, Alabama, and then took oh. a trip home to Chicago. Oh, right. I, I love Gulf Shores. Did you have any drinks, I think, on the beach over there? 
Yeah, maybe a couple two tree. I love it. I actually went to Alaska. I, I, I'm uh, packing it, and I thought it was going to be very cold up there, and it ended up being 80 degrees every day. So I had to rewash those shorts a few times. I love it. But uh, amazing, uh, amazing. All right, well, Ryan Sellers, we'll see you right back here next week, man. As always, open outcry, everybody. Thank you for Thanks, your time. Ryan.